Does that make sense? Did y'all get that? Okay, here's the message with that. We're going to talk about the fulfillment. The fulfillment. Now, since Easter, we've been talking about the time between Easter and Pentecost. And so today, we're going to start in, at, at, they're in this journey, they're still in this journey, but then they're going to arrive at the day that we celebrate this day. But, 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 but in, in, in the Bible, Luke's, the end of Luke's gospel and the first chapter of Acts are almost the same book, same chapter, because they are written by the same person. Luke wrote the, 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 the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostle. Now, while Acts says the Acts of the Apostle is really only talking about its spots, uh, apostles in Acts, but it's only really talking about two of them. One was, 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 was Peter, and the other one was Paul. It's only two of them. But so when I looked at the last chapter of Luke, and then I looked at the first chapter of Acts, I said they're chronicling the same event. And, and they give us the final words and actions of Jesus bodily in the earth after he had been seen by many people, as many as 500 people at one time. And he did that for a reason, so that the word could get out that he did what he said he was going to do. Amen? And he did it so you would tell down through the ages, we have witnesses, we have witnesses, we heard, we heard, we heard, we heard, all the way back to that time. Amen? Now, quickly, turn to Acts 1, 4 through 5. Acts 1, 4 through 5. And it reads, And being assembled together with them, that means Jesus with them, he commanded them not to depart from, from Jerusalem, but to wait for the, of what? But, but to, to wait, wait on the what? Of the Father. Which he said, you have heard from me. In that instance, they had heard it from him. But it was not the first time it was said. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Not many days from now. The command was to wait for the promise of the Father. To wait. Wait is a word you don't want to use often. But if God has made you a promise, the only thing you really can do with it is wait. Amen? And he said, he said, I'm going to tell you where to wait at. Wait in Jerusalem. Because when he was talking to them, he was at a mountain called Mount Olivet, which was a Sabbath day's journey from Jerusalem. That means, uh, it, all that means is that it was a walking distance from Jerusalem. Walking distance. And, and he said, go to Jerusalem, to that same upper room where it celebrated the Last Supper that became known as the Lord's Supper, where he had met them several times, he said, go and wait until you receive the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father being the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The disciples had instructions, their doubts were settled, their faith was intact, but they, they lacked the power to do the work as Jesus in the earth. That means they were totally equipped, except they didn't have a battery. We have a lot of toys in our house now. 
a lot, a lot of them lead battles. And the toy is able to work as long as the battery is in. And to work efficiently as long as the battery is in. But if the battery is not in it, it's just a toy with capabilities of doing something. Amen. And the church too long has been settling for being a toy without capability. So the church has to have its battery. Oh, God. Are you listening? I want everybody to get this. Say this with me. The church has to have its battery. And our battery is the Holy Spirit. They knew how to pray. He had worked on their faith. Called them out of hiding. But they need to be in power. And you need your battery for one reason. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit for, for, for one key reason. I know we think it's a lot of them, but it's one key reason. I'll get to that. Let's get back to they were told to wait. To wait means that it was worth it. When God tells you to wait on something, it's because it's worth it. Wow. To wait means that they had a promise that would come. Because he said it. Can you believe it because he said it? Can you wait because he said it? To wait means they must receive it. They could not create it themselves. Sometimes in the waiting, you get creative. And start helping. He said, I'm going to bring you out of debt, so you start doing other stuff to help it. I'm, I'm sorry. Wait means just that, wait. First of all, he, he does not need your help. How many know he doesn't need your help? help? And in many times, he works out a lot, lot better if you don't help. The help is in the command, just, just wait, wait on me. me. Amen. Amen. To wait means that they will be tested in the wait. There is no time that you ever have to wait that you aren't tested in that wait. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I knew something was coming to this church, something that was promised, and, and a mail had come, and we responded to it, and it, and it was supposed to materialize in something. And, and I couldn't hardly wait. I run to the mail every day. Then when it didn't show up, I called him. I said, where is it? And then when the Lord said, is it promised? I said, yeah. Is it coming? I said, yeah. Well, you wait on it. I took my hands off of it and it started. You know, it came fast. But not before I tried to help it get here faster. And you can't make God move faster. If you're praying to get God to move fast, to stop it. He moves it his own time. You just keep circling it in prayer. Oh. And then we find something else. That, let, let me read a little bit more. Uh, uh, Acts. One, six, through eight. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of, to Israel? They're still in Olivet. They're still outside of Jerusalem. They haven't gone yet. And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. See, he was talking about, he was trying to get them ready for the Holy Ghost, and they was wondering when they were going to take over. 
They, they miss the kingdom, kingdom objective. Because some things you think that are important in our kingdom, they are not. And, and you, you get, get lost in time doing that, and you miss, miss the kingdom. With an excuse, well, you know what I've got to do. It's, it's not kingdom. Then yeah. oh. Jesus, in the next verse, says, it's, it's not for you, you know, he had to straighten them out, get them ready real good. good. But, 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 but this thing is, is hit with the authority of the Father. In other words, it's his business. Then he said, now this is your business. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the to the end of the that's your business. Not when the takeover is going to happen. And isn't it funny, if you do his business, your business gets handled? When we decide our business ain't needed, ain't near as important as his business, he'll handle your business. Wow. Wow. Reading a little bit further, the verse 9, it says, now, when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. He was taken up. He was taken up. That means his last instruction to them about get to Jerusalem, and that they were to minister to Judea, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. He, he, he had given them their, their final, this is the great commission, he had given them their, their final instruction, and then he rose on a cloud. And, 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 and then he told them before he left, he said, he said not many days. This was the 40th day from the, re from the resurrection of the dead. It was the 40th day. And when he said not many days, they didn't know that 10 days later, what he had promised was going to show up. On the 50th day. But, but God does everything thematically. Yes. It wouldn't have happened on the 40th day because Jerusalem would not have been filled with people on the 40th day. Yes. Yes. Pentecost was also another feast day called Sabbath, which was 50 days after Passover. Jesus was crucified in the middle of Passover. And so after resurrection and after the, uh, Passover, both collided at the same 50th day. Are y'all there? And at the 50th day, Jerusalem was full of people pilgriming, uh, pilgrimaging, to come to Jerusalem for the feast day. But they don't know it was Holy Spirit day. That's why Peter could preach to 5,000. 3,000. Thousands and thousands of untold people because the city was engorged with people. They would have been there on day 40. Day 40 was Jesus' get out of town, get out of earth day. And he left, the Bible says, on a cloud. Some scriptures say on a cloud. Some says he went up into a cloud. But God is so unique. It was a strange kind of glory cloud back in the Old Testament that led the Israelites through. See, when he says from glory to glory, glory has to operate with glory. God is consistent. He takes his, his, his one string or several strings and he weaves them throughout all of history. So no strange stuff shows up that you've never seen before. And when he said the cloud, immediately all the reference said is that same glory cloud that showed up in the temple. Now, 
Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8, the Holy Spirit will come upon them and they will be witnesses. Be witnesses. You only witness one thing. Jesus Christ. You're witnesses of Jesus Christ and what he did. Forty days early. Where? Where are you a witness? Jerusalem, where he was executed. Judea, where he was rejected. Go all, to all of the places that had a problem and witness. Samaria, where he ministered to half-breeds that were rejected. Remember the Samaritan woman? Oh, oh. And then to the uttermost part of where the Gentiles, you know who the Gentiles are. They sit in that 4660 military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentile Yvonne. Gentile Rose. Yeah, even Gentile Helene. Gentile. It simply means non-Jews. Non -Jews. Yeah. I didn't call, call you a sinner. Yeah. I said a Gentile. Yeah. Non-Jews. Yeah. Wow, wow. Acts 9 through 11, and it reads, Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Say, out of their sight. Out of their sight. And, 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 and this is Jesus. Jesus wasn't going through a wall. He wasn't appearing out of nowhere. He left in plain vision out of their sight. And he took his body with him. Jesus is the only one in heaven. Well, no, I have to take that back. Jesus and Jesus and several other people are the only ones with their body in heaven. This body, this touchable body, it, 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 it's seated next to God. Isn't that a deep thought? That's why it's not found. Because he took it. Read it a little, little bit more. more. And, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them who were angels in white apparel. Two men stood by while they were looking up. Now, mind you, he had already told them, go on to Jerusalem and wait to receive what? The promise of who? Yeah, yeah. And while he was leaving, <laughs> you know what? You, you, you want to keep looking for your crush. No. No. He don't need to be going nowhere. Where is he going? And he's leaving differently than he ever did before. He's not, not doing, doing the same, same old way. way. He, he, and, and that, that, that cloud he's standing on, what, it, it's really taking him a, a long way away. And, and, and the angels, you know, the Bible is nice, but I believe they had to get their attention and say, hey! Why are you standing here gazing at him? Don't even worry about that. He's going to come back the same way. In, in other, other words, words, that's, that's what, what it says in the Bible. Bible. Let, let me let me go, go on. The, the Bible, Bible says that that, that they continued, then they returned, returned to Jerusalem in, 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 in verse 12, twelve from the Mount called Olivet. They, they returned, returned to Jerusalem immediately after that scene. Immediately after that scene. Now. He had already said not many days hence, but the issue was 
the Bible can be funny about tomorrow and coming soon and not many days hence. It could have been 10, it could have been 20. They didn't have the plan of God in their head completely. Are you there? They didn't have a plan. They didn't have it. They just said, he said, go away to Jerusalem. They didn't know how long they were going to wait. But here is what they had to do. They had to prepare for the wait. Ooh, they went to the upper room. I don't know how they fed them. They, they had to have food. They had to change clothes. They had to bathe. But 120 people stayed in one spot waiting for the promise. Do y'all see it? What were they doing? They were waiting for the promise. But they weren't just waiting. Lord, when are you coming? Lord, you got to come on here. I'm tired of this one room. We got to try to get food together. And, and some of these kids are getting on my nerves. This couple over here keep talking while I'm trying to sleep. They, 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 they smack it and eat too loud. There's a lot of stuff going on in this upper room. And, and we all here together waiting on what? See, that's when doubt come in, when you start questioning the weight. The weight brings forth a strange testimony out of you. It brings forth your dark side. But the Bible says that's not what happened. They waited in unity. That means they took on a different agenda in their weight. Oh, my God. And while they were waiting, the Bible says, I looked it up, they only prayed, everybody wake up, one prayer. They didn't pray, Lord bless us with would, 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 would smother pork chops tomorrow. <laughs> or bless us with this. Or give us the other. Or give us this. They prayed one prayer. Everybody said one prayer. See, unity means you circle with one prayer. And that one prayer was a, a prosukomai. It's Greek. It's coming up. Did you, did you put the first word? That's okay. okay. The, the first, first prefix, prefix pro means towards and facing God directly. That means they determined that when we pray, here's prosukuma. There it is. Pro. Towards and facing God, how? That means they pray intentionally for his will to get done along the sending of the promise of the Father. And then Sukumai, Yukumai, is the last part of the second syllable. To speak out how to the one who will answer. Oh, God, 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 God. God, God. Nothing happens in the kingdom until something is. Look at this scene. Now, they were praying loudly in the upper room where Romans were on the outside because they were believing for something. Here is the same people, some of those disciples and other people, who hid out when Jesus got up from the grave. When, when it was crucified, they had hid out. out. Now, they in the upper room. Send the promise. And they did this all day, every day, 24-7. How long? They didn't let up. Go, oh, God. Maybe if you don't let up, it'll happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, 
no, this is what I want. No, this is what God, God, I know you're going to hear me. I know you're going to hear me. I'm in your face with this because I want this to happen. I want this to happen. I want this to happen. And the next person is saying, I want what they want. We want this to happen. And the next person said that until all 120 were saying the same thing. See, we pray once and we look for results. And wonder when nothing happens, why it's not happening. Well, you didn't persevere in prayer. You didn't ask and keep on asking, and you didn't knock and keep on knocking. You just expected to show up because you did one little pitiful two-second prayer. When the trouble you've been in has been years in the making. <laughs> And, and, and for years in the making, you need to pray long and hard. <laughs> you need to do something different. You need to go at it differently. You need to keep circling until something happens. And they had a promise that they were waiting on. And Jesus had already told you, not many days from now. They didn't know it was going to be 10 days. But how many you know 10 days seem like a lifetime? When you lock in with 120 people waiting on something. Some of us can't stand ourselves for. Pray until what's been promised or hoped for shows up. That's when you let up. Pray until it show up. These last, last couple of days, days we've been praying, praying about stuff and the children. We just had a victory last week. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Brit. We were praying for her. She's she looking for this other job, this other position and stuff. And, 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 and it seemed like all oh, hell was breaking loose. loose. She's still, still going, going through hell. hell. Still, still going through hell on the current job. But here's the blessing. In the middle of the current job, say in the middle. This is request time. This is the middle. This is the other side. We ain't here yet. But what did God do with what we circled in prayer? Well, he decided that in the midst of this, while she's still kind of going through some changes here, what we prayed for jumped in. She's still going through it on one job, but, but she has a start date for the other job. You have to pray and tell what you're believing for. It ain't with me yet. But I'm going to keep on circling. I'm going to keep on circling. I'm going to keep on circling. And then, then one day out of the blue, where did you come from? See, we, we want to play with God, God, but we don't want to trust him. We only need him in the, in the 911. How many of you believe in for something? How many of you has it come to pass yet? Has it come to pass yet? Well, what's your job? You know where you are? You're just in the hallway. You're between, between the, the promise and the fulfillment. But God has a way of dropping something down. And he showed me something these days that you don't have to be totally delivered from what's stressing you out to get blessed in the middle. Oh, no, 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 you don't understand. You think you just go from, hop from one thing to another, and sometimes God does it in the middle of your trouble. He gives you a yes on your own on the long while you're still trying to work something else out. Give you a yes on your car while you're trying, trying to figure out how am I going to make it work until I can get to the bank to do what I need to do. See, your hell don't stop God from blessing. No, 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 you don't know what I'm talking about. Turn to somebody and say, your hell won't stop God from blessing you. You know why? Because he can jump down in the...
for a while he has jumped down and blessed you, you looking at your blessing, don't blow it in the hallway. Don't blow it in the hallway. Brittany, don't blow it in the halls. Before you start there, don't blow it in the hallway. Because the enemy want to make you get messed up in the hallway. I'm sorry, I didn't got away off. Do y'all almost understand what I'm talking about? My computer decided to just shut down on me and do something different. Joel 2, 28 through 29. Yeah. But I had to give you that piece to let you know that you are all right. Anybody in the hallway? Who in the hallway in this room? You know, when they've been in the face of hell, they've been in the face of hell, I'm in the hallway. But the first door had a promise with it. I'm just in the hallway. You're going to get this today. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And the Bible says, and suddenly there came a sound from, well, no, 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 Acts, Joel, 2, 28. I'm sorry. And it, it shall come, come to pass after the word. Now, this, this is before it ever happened. happened. And, and it, it shall come, come to pass afterwards. See, that's one of them words, afterwards. How long is afterwards? Well, Joel is Old Testament. Old Testament. And, and it, it shall come, come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on some flesh. flesh. Your sons and your daughters. That's why I don't understand how people have a problem with women preaching. Who could, Who could deny that Sherry was a good woman preacher? Who could deny that Dr. Daniels is a good woman preacher? That's anointed with revelation. Any of my other lady preachers, I don't even deny that y'all are able to do a good job. Because God said it. And God can handle his own business. Because if you're not called, everybody know it. <laughs> Your old men, you know, I used to read this when I was a young preacher. Divided tongues as a fire. That's why I don't understand 
How do you know the Holy Ghost is with you and you don't know you don't ever warm up? I have the Holy Ghost, but you still cool as a cucumber. <laughs> you, you, you still cool, <laughs> but you got the Holy Ghost. No, you got a ghost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a ghost. And, and one sat upon each of them. Everybody got their own fire. Everybody got their own fire. I, I said something there. Everyone can have their own fire. Pay attention, please. I'm trying to carry you someplace that you need to be at. Because some of you will come into the foyer of the church, but won't come into the sanctuary. You'll go so far in, but you won't get the full letter of the Word of God. And this is the full letter of the Word of God. Don't just stop on the steps. Come on in. Get the whole thing. You think I gave my life to the Lord? Yeah, up. Uh. There's something else to do. If you're not filled, you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't need that. Yes, you do. Because you operate without a battery. You might have some work you're doing. You might know what's right. You might say, I'm doing good. I don't hurt nobody. But you don't have the power to do the work that he called you to do. You don't have the power to do the work that he called you to do. And he came in and made, he said, so you would be a witness of one person, and that's Jesus Christ. Because he's the one that saves the lost, sets the captive free. They must know Jesus. And you've been empowered to tell them. Are y'all still there? And set upon each of them. And they were They were, all. how many? All. How many in the upper room? 120. And from that day, people that desired to be filled were filled over and over again. You didn't have to wait on it. The only waiting period was for 10 days. Go wait till you receive power. 10 days later. You need to tell no more. All you need to do is receive. Come into the church. Come in out of the fort. Come into the full sanctuary. Come into the full power. I'm not just satisfied. Church membership ain't it. Being a witness is. Because you can be a member and visit every now and then. And feel all right. And it said, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began. How did they know they were filled with the Holy Spirit? What does it say? Everybody read it together. And began to speak other tongues. As what? See, they spoke with other tongues. They used other tongues. In that day, I can explain it was two. It was, it was, the unknown tongues is the prayer language. The other tongues was other languages. And, and the Spirit released them to say it. So the Spirit didn't have a voice. They did. So it's like that switch turned on. The switch is really, uh, the electricity is going through it, but until the switch is activated, the light won't come on. So when they speak, it's not like the Holy Spirit says something about you. You shall not. No, when you hear the Holy Ghost, you hear yourself speaking. Oh, let's let, let demythify some, some stuff. That's Lucille. That's my voice. And I can do it at will because I've been doing it at will since I got it. Because I want it. 
Because you decided to come in out the hallway into the sanctuary. Come on, come on. Are, are you there? Does that make sense? And it said, as the Spirit gave them the blood, it told them what to speak. So when, 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 when and they said, when, 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 when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the same feast, Shabbat, became Pentecost. Pentecost meaning 50, was fully come. That means at daybreak, these people were praying. That's what fully come means. The sun coming up. They were praying. Had fully, fully come, come that's, that's when the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost said, let, let me jump, jump in on it. It's, it's amazing, amazing you've been waiting for something, but the Bible says it's a sudden thing. Yeah. In other words, it didn't ease up on them during the 10 days. Yeah. They, they were, were shouting along the way. Ooh, yeah, day one. Ooh, ooh, I got a double dip today. Day, day three. three. Ooh, shock, ooh, 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 ooh. ooh. Oh, oh, oh. The fourth day you just laid down. Oh. You know, they had to pray that same super my prayer until early that morning when the sun peeped in. It said, now. And then, then they said, and suddenly, fire was on top of each other. You know how they knew it was fire sitting on them? Because one person said, there's something on your head. There's something sitting on you. And, and the, the person, person turned back to them and said, something's sitting on you, too. Yeah. And, and then, then all of them looked around and said, it's going in. Yeah. It's, it's dropping in. Yeah. Where did it go? <laughs> Where did it go? Father, who's wrong, say? Oh, no. <laughs> what, what this passage tells us about the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is promised to us. All of us. The gift of the Holy Spirit is worth waiting for. It's worth receiving. The gift of the Holy Spirit comes as he wills, often nor not according to our expectation. You just have to believe you're going to get it. The gift of the Holy Spirit can come upon, on, on, on many individuals, but also upon groups. The gift of the Holy Spirit is also given as God deals with the flesh and there is a dying to self. If you want the Holy Spirit, you can receive it. You need to just decide, I'm going to push my flesh out the way and believe. They were in one accord and in one place. They were gathered together sharing the same heart, the same love of God, the same trust in his promise, and the same geography. Then it happened. Everybody say, then it happened. Final words. Before we can be filled, we must recognize our emptiness. I don't have my battery. By gathering together for prayer and obedience, this, the disciples did just that. They recognized they did not have the resource in themselves to do and to become Jesus in the earth. This whole message was about you becoming Jesus in the earth. So while we're praying, while we're believing, I'm going to do all the calls right now. I don't care who you are from the front of this church to the back. You heard me. If you are in this room, and on this Pentecost Sunday, if you are not filled full of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you need to decide, I want it. Please pay attention. Don't get distracted. We, can, we start turning into everything else.
someone Jesus got to become the most important thing in your heart, in your life. I say, God, I just don't want to be partial to him. I want to be full of him. And I'm not trying to embarrass you. I want everybody to get it all. If you are in this room today and you are not filled and you want to be filled, you believe you can be filled, you know it's available to you, I made it plain, I cut through, I tried to give it to you as plainly and clearly as possible so you would understand that it is for all and it was, ever, it was promised to 40 the day when Jesus left the earth and he said, go wait for it. They waited for it and it happened and it came in and it got on every one of them. It went inside every one of them and it's been, it's been filling people ever since that day at daybreak. If you are here today and you're not filled, Pastor said get filled. We can pray for you, believe for you, rehearse this over and over in your ear, run alongside of you until you get filled. I'm talking to you today. Just say, Pastor. Just slip up my hand. I want to be healed. Religion is not enough. Being a member of a church is not enough. You need power of witness. Just slip up my hand and say, I want to be healed. I don't see it. Believers are filled for the Holy Ghost. I'm coming against every head trip. That's what this Bible says. Stop talking. Believers are filled. Whichever one, use it. 